All right, welcome back to another episode of our Guild Wars 1 playthrough in Prophecies. And this episode is going to be a voiceover episode because I didn't have my microphone uh, set up properly. I actually had it muted the whole time, so that's awesome. But anyway, I'm going to add some commentary over this run of uh, Borea Seabed, the first Luxon mission. Last episode, we finished the Arbor Stone. Very traumatic experience. Took us like, at, it took us around 10 tries, I think. I lost count after a while, but uh, yeah, we did that. And now um, we are gonna follow our primary quest, which is gonna lead us back to Matu Keep. Because while we, we came with Menlo to talk to the Kurzix, now we got to go with Master Togo to plead with the uh, Luxins. We are we are in the process of recovering some artifacts of some ancient heroes. First one was Saint Victor of the Kurzix. We got his urn from Arborstone, and now we're gonna get the spear of what's it? Some spear spear of Archimedes Archimedes something like that. We'll, we'll find it soon. I already... Yeah. Anyway, uh, the cool thing about Matu Keep is we get so many henchmen. We get, like, the Kurzik side henchmen. We get the Luxon side henchmen. We get the Canton henchmen. So that's a pretty nice uh, uh, choices here. We're not going to have all these choices whenever we start the Luxon mission, but still. Oh, we're going to pick up our henchmen and head over to... Boria Seabed. We're gonna keep running our illusionary weaponry or go back rather to our illusionary weaponry build. I, I'm trying to get my uh, pet, my tiger back at least up to level 20. Pretty awesome. I haven't decided a name for the tiger yet uh, so that's open for discussion. Throw out your best pet tiger names in the comments and then whichever one gets the most likes I'll I might choose it depending on how appropriate it is, but yeah, if you feel like if you like throwing a name uh, recommendation, you're welcome to do that. So here's Master Togo. He's uh, telling us the same message he does from the beginning about Canning City, but yeah, here he's saying we need to meet up with someone called Rhea, and she's gonna uh, she's kind of the leader of the Luxons and. We got to do something for them and in order to get their Spear of Archimedes. Of course, probably like the Kurzix, it's not going to be as easy as just being like, hey, can we have the Spear? Uh, we're probably going to have to do something for them. So we'll see what that is. I like this Pongmei Valley area because it just has, it has so many different enemies. It's got like the Jade, the Jade Brotherhood. It has the Amfa. It has the like the contrast between the Canning City and like it's it's in between area of both the the forest and the sea. It's pretty cool. It's kind of weird. There's a uh, Canton Guard way out here. What you doing out here, buddy? Anyway. <laughs> It's not too it's not too far of a run just going through some enemies there are a couple bosses that you could get in this area there's a, a ranger boss and a warrior boss in addition to the to the assassin boss where we got these cool daggers daggers of Zhu Kao. If you didn't check out that video of me farming them I think it's pretty entertaining I use a very unconventional way of farming them without having to solo it. So if you're having trouble getting green items, that could serve as a little bit of a guide to uh, get green items more easily, or at least in a less stressful way as soloing. So 
We're just following the road here. Yeah, noticing this build, uh, so we got a comment in the last one. Yeah, this is not like an optimal build. For example, I'm using the the ranger skill that disables all of my non-ranger attack abilities or whatever. And I would not choose that skill. I would choose, or I rather, I would choose a lot of other skills over this one. But just to kind of re-explain this playthrough we're doing, it's uh, going through pro prophecies and now factions in order of release. So we're kind of role playing as someone who is playing for the first time. Um, even though I am very, very experienced in this game, <laughs> as you uh, probably couldn't tell from some of my noob uh, experiences. But yeah, we're, we're not running an optimal skill bar because these are the skills that we are pretty much only allowed to have. Uh, we're not allowed to go to Alona to pick up skills. We're not allowed to go to Nightfall. We're not allowed to go to Eye of the North because pl I'm playing in order of release. So um, we're not really, I'm not really doing it as a challenge. I mean, it is challenging for sure. But really, I just feel like it has more um, it has more of a nostalgic feel to it playing it this way. Like, I don't have to... Uh, I, I don't get to just have the most overpowered skill bar from the very beginning. I also find that whenever I play Guild Wars like that, where like I rush to level 20, I rush to get like the, the most elite skills with the best skills on the bar... I find myself not committing to that character. Like, I'll probably get bored with the game and then quit playing it. I have to say, like, I've picked up Guild Wars on and off since it was released. And, um, like, doing this playthrough in this way has made the game, like, very addicting again. Like, the same way it was when it first came out. So, that's a... If, if you're ever thinking about getting back into the game, I highly recommend... You don't need to, like, start with a fresh account or anything, but... I, I highly recommend doing this kind of playthrough. Anyway. There's a collector here. Kind of contemplating whether or not I should get this Domination Wand. Because I have a pretty nice Domination Staff. Uh, but we like to use our shield. If we use this wand, we'd be able to use it with our Anniversary Shield. Um, which, yeah, I know the Anniversary Shield is not available in the, in the time of release. I am bending the rules somewhat uh, here. So, so uh, yeah, bear with me there. But uh, We are at the Boreas Sea Pat, or the Boreas Sea Bed. That's what it's called. And we are now going to be helping the Luxons do some sort of... Um, uh, I don't know what it's called. Ritual? Is that what this is called? Yeah. It's going to be a nice little cutscene here. First we locate Elder Rhea. She is the key to finding and securing the Spear of Archimorus. Yeah, the Luxons are kind of like nomads, so they they are riding these giant sea turtles. Look really cool. Really cool character design and world design for the Luxons. I'm not sure what, like, what kind of peoples they're inspired by. Like, the Luxons? Yeah, anyway. Self-styled exile. How you managed to live within the confines of that stuffy monastery, I'll never comprehend. 
I'm not really a fan of her voice acting, if I'm being honest. She like clearly sounds like a young woman pretending to sound, trying to sound like an old woman, like if that makes sense. Tigers in the cutscene there. Rhea. Togo, if you want the spear, you will have to fight them for it. Another convocation has come, and with it, Zu Hanuku, the mighty sea beast who has terrorized the Jade Sea for hundreds of years. I return the spear to the pedestal, the prize of today's contest. May the strongest clan Here's the spear. Looks pretty cool. It would have been nice if they had it as like a a weapon skin actually for Paragon later. It looks nice. Or like a it looks more like a staff actually, doesn't it? Nice reference to Gladiator. Yeah, so we have now, we lost our henchmen coming in here, and now we're limited again to the uh, Canton, or... I'm not, honestly, I'm still not quite sure what the choice is here. Like, why did we lose... Why did we lose Devona and them suddenly? Um, coming here. Still, I, I, I don't understand why we have such... Why they give us such few... Um, henchman choices. Not that these are bad, like, like, uh, Chio is a pretty nice spirit henchman. Um, the assassins are good. For this run, I'm trying to go, like, super single target DPS to try and burst down. There's a lot of bosses in this mission, actually. There's like, right at the beginning, there's like six bosses, so. Some pretty good core skills and faction skills that you can capture here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn in this uh, quest to Elder Rhea before we start. Yeah, so I grabbed the Signet of Capture. I'm not really sure which skill uh, I should capture here. There's some Ranger skills. That are pre that would be pretty nice for a hero, but I'm pretty sure there's some Mesmer skills. Uh, at least one Mesmer elite skill. So this, this mission is kind of like uh, Thirsty River, I believe, back in Prophecies. It's kind of like a PvP style mission. So there's three sections of teams that we need to fight. And hopefully this build is going to work out. <laughs> it's not the most, it's not the most uh, well-rounded build, I have to say. So start the mission, you come down, take a look at the spear. Can't pick it up yet, of course. And then the first team runs out. It's Damon, he's a ranger who uses some interrupting skills and then the warrior warrior the warrior here has a really nice skill has uses dragon slash though there's some good skills for most of the classes in this mission so you want want to have some melee and auto, and attacking um shutdowns for these guys Hex removal would be good here as well. I think Minion Master is a good choice for this mission for sure. There's tons of tons of bodies that you can 
exploit. I think you could, you might even be able to run two minion masters if you had an extra necromancer or player or something. So another ranger enemy using barrage and a monk who's using really good, uh, a really good protection elite skill. Yeah, and these teams all have resurrection, either signets or resurrection skills, so that makes it a little more challenging. But overall, this mission seems to be easier than Arbor Stone. It's at least like faster pace. Like, really, two of the three teams are down without even breaking a sweat. So, kind of steamrolling through this mission at this point. Let's take a look. Yeah, so you can get you can get Barrage here. It'd be a really nice skill for Rangers. And I guess Barrage is a core skill because it was available in Prophecies as well. Now it's time for Argo. Argo is probably the most famous of the Luxons, I think. I think you can even get him as a henchman later on, if I remember correctly. I'm feeling pretty confident, and that hurts. Immediately standing in all of the AoE. <laughs> that is rough. And Argo has a non... Or it ha he has a, uh, uh, what do you call it? A monster only skill or a, an NPC only skill called Argo's Fury, I think. And he just, yeah, Argo's Cry. And he calls down meteor showers just for free, basically. Oh, gosh. Yeah, so I'm not going to be successful on the first run here. And I'm probably going to need to not run this skill bar. Illusionary weaponry is, um, it was fine for the warriors and stuff, but dang, that was rough. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to try that again. <laughs> and this time, actually, yeah, let's run we're going to run Energy Surge with some Interrupt and some uh, m uh, Energy Denial. This this build is pretty nice, I think. We have some Energy Denial. We got some Spiking. We have some uh, Warrior Shutdowns and some Spellcasting Interrupts. I'll try and do it a little bit smarter this time instead of just rushing around. Yeah, you could take this bridge to go straight to the boss, but actually the gate does not open unless you come down to take a look. You got to take a look at the spear first. And then, yeah, Damon says some nasty, challenging words and try to bring the fight to them. I want to, I want to try and get them like, um, what do you call it, grouped up in this little doorway, but our our team kind of stayed back a little bit. Nice spike damage there. We learned that the mind, mind um, rack and energy surge combo is some really good spike damage. Yeah, it's like 125 damage immediately. And then if they can get, if I can quickly drain all of their energy down to zero, it's another 100 damage spike after that. So, can almost one shot enemies pretty well. Make sure I'm using the correct weapons. I'm using my daggers there. So these first two. These first two teams are actually a little bit harder with this skill bar. Have to make sure you take out the monk as soon as possible. And yeah, okay, interrupted the resurrection. Didn't interrupt it the second time there. So interrupts are really useful here, but you got to make sure to get them off successfully. Good chaos storm damage right there. And they keep resurrecting each other, so it's... 
really tough. Something like, yeah, the the enemies started. I feel like they uh, z like zoned in on me more than usual. Life sheath. That's the that's the monk elite that you can get here. Very nice monk elite skill. I almost I was I was really close to running if I didn't run Mesmer for this run through I was gonna actually run monk I think that would have been really fun it would have been a little bit tough but if we could have gotten some more players I think a monk a monk support run would be pretty fun yeah my idea here was to aggro and draw the AoE and then have my teammates rush in after they targeted me, but yeah, I just got one shotted right away. But even though I'm prepared for this Argo, my plan was to just interrupt his big spells and try and dr uh, deny his energy, but it still turns out to be a tough battle. Like, I died twice now. But we are going to pick it up. Yeah, I successfully interrupt Argo Cry. And once we get them almost down, we're going to secure this win here. And I like, that's like death number four now. Mind Burn just does crazy amounts of damage. Which I thought it would, wouldn't be able to do that much because I'm denying their energy, but still. So that's the first leg of the mission. Oh man, the flesh golem messing up the screenshot there. What a jerk. The Spear of Arkham Morris, that's the name of it. Thank you, Elder Rhea. We accept the spear and the honor of fighting the Kraken. We shall make you proud. Yes. I expect you shall. Okay, so it's actually better that we changed our skill away from the uh, illusionary weaponry because we do need to carry this bundle. And this this is uh, kind of similar to the urn of saint victor but that's like a defensive item this is more of a damaging item and then we're gonna pick up power leech very cool skill it's almost like backfire but it is uh it steals energy every time they cast a spell so you you can interrupt a spell and then they're hexed and then every time they cast you steal energy from them so it's pretty nice Fast casting, or it, it casts very quickly, and then it low energy, somewhat dependable energy reg, uh, regeneration, and then I get kind of turned around here. Have to check my map. <laughs> yeah, all you really need to do is just turn around, and then you can go the correct way. So the way the spear works is it gets charged up instead of from like the the urn got charged up from taking damage but the spear gets charged from defeating enemies so you want to hold on to it while you're battling and get it up to level five and then it becomes like a nuke basically very useful uh later on Yeah, these missions that require you to hold items, it really makes you miss playing with players. So I think for the the mission, I think the next mission you have to, you get to use both bundles. I'm definitely going to need some players to come join me for that one. So if you're interested, hit me up in game and maybe we can run the next mission together. Yeah, this energy denial is just really good against those those dudes. 
the uh, monk guardians. I decided to drop it here, and it does like yeah, 300 damage. I'm not sure because in the in the description it said it's gonna do 235, but it did way more than 235. So I'm not sure for the like why it doesn't match or what the discrepancy was, but 300 damage is really good. Really, once you defeat Argo, the mission, like, that's that's pretty much the hardest part of the mission, I think. And then you just have to be smart with what enemies you aggro here. You don't want to rush in too much. So in this mission, we get the first look at the Jade Sea. There's no open ocean here. It's all turned into Jade. Very cool level design. I think, I think factions, they just did such a good job imagining the lore tying the lore in with the geography really good job by arena net here so the kraken spawn are um mesmers that don't really use a lot of skills they have some hex removal they have some interrupts They're really not difficult enemies they, they hardly do any damage, actually. And then these flying things are like s little uh, monks. They have some smiting skills, I think. The scuttlefish. Yeah, I had a healing touch there. These scales, the carps, these are assassins. So these are pretty tricky. But still, nothing nothing too dangerous. Nothing as dangerous as Argos. Argos team was brutal. I'm deciding to just hang on to the spear because I'm I'm expecting like a difficult battle. But honestly I think you could just drop it whenever you want to do some extra damage here and there. It charges very quickly. And these battles aren't even that tough, so. Probably help clear these small mobs a lot faster had I just dropped the spear. The only thing with the spear, though, is I'm not really sure of the radius. Like, does it need to be dropped right on the enemies, or is it a pretty big area? It doesn't really show... I'm still being kind of cautious because I see this, so the enemies are like patrolling these big patrol paths and I don't want to get, I don't want to get surprised. But really they don't, they don't do much, like expel hexes, they have clumsiness, hex breaker. Really my skill bar perfectly perfectly counters them with all the interrupts that I have and I don't cast that many hexes either so so far I think energy surge this energy surge um, seems to be the most well-rounded or at least the most dependable skill bar it can just be used pretty much in any situation So whenever whenever I get whenever I have a trouble with a mission, I can always pull out the e search. I still like running like fun builds like the illusionary weaponry though. Oh, cool, cool enemy. Kind of reminds me of the boss. Remember the first boss from Final Fantasy VI? The uh, like snail boss. I forgot what it's called. Jade Fury definitely got that interrupt off sweet. Got Power Leech off. And then he's just going to keep trying to resurrect. So as long as you keep interrupting the resurrect, it's very easy to deal with. I don't think he gets off a single spell. And then by this point, yeah, Mind Rack just went off. So he's got zero energy by this point. He just has a ton of health. 
Yeah, interrupts are your friend. Energy denial is your friend in this mission. And then, yeah, I just got to keep hammering him. Denying that energy, interrupting him. And he will go down. So we weren't able to do it in our first try, but we got it on the second try here. So that's it. Zuhanuku Falls. We get the Spear of Archimurus. Final cutscene. And we get masters just like that. Where was Menlo going? Oh, there's Togo. A more well deserved victory I have not witnessed. <laughs> Master Togo. Master Togo. Menlo, come celebrate with us. We have the spear of Archimora. It's none too soon. Shiro is on the move. Wait, where's Menlo? Where? He was last seen in the <laughs> Why is he invisible here? Then we must go to the Undercity. We'll take this fight to Shiro. Okay, so we gotta go back to Canning City. We're gonna fight Shiro next. Dun dun dun. Yeah, this mission was not nearly as bad as the Arbor Zone. Jeez. So now this is the challenge mission for Luxons. And again, we might come back here if we end up siding with the Luxons. It's a good way to get some faction. But uh, yeah, we're going to stop the episode here. And next time... Oh, I need to go turn in that quest to Arborstead, actually. Next time we come back, we are going to go fight Shiro for the first time? Last time? Spoiler alert, I'm not sure. <laughs> But yeah, uh, I might, I, I'm definitely going to try and invite people to join me with that one because I want to try and u get uses, use of both of these items, the spear and the urn. Um, so yeah, if you see me in game, do not hesitate to hit me up. Let's play. Join me in the next mission. And until then, um, yeah, I'll see you. If you like this, leave a like and subscribe, all that stuff, and you can follow along. See ya!